Good morning. Welcome to Women in Security, Building a Female InfoSec Community in Korea, Japan, and Taiwan in Lagoon JKL with Suhi Kang, Asuka Nakajima, and Hazel Yen. Before we begin, there are a few brief announcements. Please stop by the business hall located in the Mandalay Bay, Oceanside, and Shoreline Ballrooms on Level 2. The Black Hat Arsenal is located inside of the business hall on Level 2. Lunch will be available in Bayside AB from 1 to 2.30 this afternoon. And don't forget the merchandise store on Level 2 and session recordings available from Source of Knowledge. They have a desk on every level. We ask that you please put your phone on vibrate or turn it off in order to avoid interrupting the presentation. And now, please welcome Suhi Kang, Asuka Nakajima, and Hazel Yen. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our talk today. I'm Suka Nakajima from NTT, and I'm also a regional review board of Black Hat Asia. So today, we would like to talk about building a female infosec community in South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan. So, as everyone knows, the information security industry has historically been a male-dominated field. And even today, unfortunately, the situation has not changed much. For example, the study conducted by Frost and Sullivan in 2017 concluded that women represent only 11% of the information security workforce. So while more women are expected to join the information security industry, still, it is difficult to increase their, their number because women face many obstacles, such as stereotype bias, like, oh, women are not good at programming and engineering and blah, blah, blah. So based on our experience, we, we strongly believe that one way to bridge this gap is to uh, is a female community, which can support and motivate women and produce more role models. So with this in mind, today we would like to introduce three representative Asian female communities, Power of XX, CTFR Girls, and Hitcom Girls, which was established in South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan. So first, Suhi Kong, who is the founder of Power of XX, will introduce the female in this community in South Korea. And then I, Asuka Nakajima, the founder of CTFR Girls, will introduce the female the community in Japan. And lastly, uh, Hazel Yan, the co-founder of Hitcom Girls, will introduce the female the community in Taiwan. So during the talk, we will give details on how we build and maintain the communities, and what we have achieved, and how we tackle various challenges. So based on the talk, um, we strongly believe that we could provide a um, insight that could help start a new female infosec community and encourage other existing female infosec communities. Okay, so let us begin now. Okay. <clears throat> uh, hi everyone. Um, thanks for coming today. This is quite a few more people than I expected, so I really appreciate it. Um, I'm Suhi from Korea, and uh, the, the issue that I'm going to talk about today is women's cybersecurity community in Korea. Now, I'm working for POC Security, uh, which organizes POC, ZeroCon, and NOSEC conferences, and you can find more about me through this slide, and then we can start. Then what is power of access? Here, XX means chromosome of women. So Power of XX is the women on ECTF based in Korea. And it was the first battle of women on ECTF uh, in the world. <clears throat> Throughout this event from the previous time, uh, more remarkable and talented women are expressing their interest of cybersecurity field, and it is gradually increasing. So now it is not a simple CTF, it became uh, one of the community in Korea. So then I will give an introduction of Power of Access briefly. It, is, it, it was established in 2011 
At the time when I was at Cybersecurity Club, which name is SIS in university, I was advised by POC Security to run this event. So that was the starting point of Power of Access. And in, in early 2010, there were a few female um, cybersecurity club in Korea. So SIS has taken the opportunity and broadened the prospects. Those are posters from 2011 to 18, and uh, uh, right side picture is the Japanese news when, when I organized the uh, Power of Access in 2011. And for the operation, it is zero party style CTF, and we have a qualification on September or October. Final is organized in November during POC conference. So Power of Access is one of the biggest events uh, held in our POC conference. And usually we have eight, more than 80 teams in average, and no limitation in number of members or nationality to attend our qualification. And only six to eight teams go to final and consist of five to six members. We have various teams from uh, high schools, uh, university clubs, and researcher-oriented. So all par participants are aged from 10s to 30s. Award is given to first to third places. And until 2016, SIS and the Hacker School, which is one of the hacker community in Korea, were running Power of Access together. And from 2017 till now, SIS and Demon team, which is one of the hacker team in Korea, are running power of access together. So those are pictures of them. Then why we run this? Before talking about this, I want to talk about some barriers we found. So the first uh, barrier women felt is that women are underrepresented in this area. So there were lack of community for women. And also these are linked to lack of female role models in this field. Maybe difficulties in learning could be another reason. But the most highlighted thing uh, is that this area is supposed to be male dominated field. So women are just like hanging around them, not the main part. Those are pictures of Power of Access and Belluminar. Belluminar is one of, uh, one of the international CTF held in POC conference. And as you can see, in Belluminar area, all members are male. We can observe those things also in the research of ISACA in 2017. So all those things make women get lose their confidence and courageous. So eventually lots of women give up their career by the time they have chance to step up. So, to cultivate women information security researchers and hackers, and to retain women who are already in this field, we've established an active and sociable networking community. Then why we started with CTF? Uh, to get out of a uh, male-dominated area and to increase women's accessibility, uh, we thought CTF is one of the appropri appropriate way so that's why we started with CTF. So in previous part, I, I found, uh, we found some barriers and to overcome those, we tried several things. The first one is interesting concept challenges. Uh, three interesting concept challenges like using Morse code, main system, or treasure hunt, card game, and so on, we, could, uh, we were able to recruit more women researchers. Um, all challenges have various categories like programming, system, web, network, frenzy, crypto, misc, and so on. And we, we tried to combine them with uh, interesting concepts or uh, latest issues so that we can, so that we can trigger more in women's interest. And all challenges are ranged over all level uh, from basic to advanced one. Uh, we've tried several years to make larger larger pool of women researchers and to give them more opportunities to build networks together. You know, building networks uh, is one of the important thing in this area. So from 2011 to 14, um, 
Power of XX winner team invited to PhD CTF final in Russia. And in 2014, we invited uh, CTF for girls teams in Japan to final. And in 2015, we invited well-known hacker from abroad as a mentor. We ran a mentor program for three to four hours. He gave a small session about reverse engineering and Q&A session for, uh, to give attendees uh, practical advices. In 2017, we invited HitCon girls in Taiwan to final. And every year, we provide some souvenirs to PR our event and community. And of course, we invited whole teams to our networking party so that they can communicate each other and have more uh, opportunities to meet up with famous researchers. So those are the pictures of what I've said before, uh, in previous slide. So left side is the pictures of 2011. So they invited to Russia PhD CTF final. And in the middle, those are pictures of 2012 and 2015's mentor program. The last one is the picture of 2017. So as you can see, we are uh, growing up. And thirdly, we recruit them to hacker teams. Um, through, through our CTF, we found some talented girls. So apparently Diamond Team, which is the team our company supported, uh, recruit them as a team member. So that, so, and, and then we provide some opportunities to attend our technical conferences and training course. Um, they've managed to learn and study on various subjects. And or we connected them to other hacking team so that they can study with new members. So impacts. Through all our efforts, uh, more women hackers and researchers could be active. So at the beginning, we, we have only about 30 people to, uh, who attend our CTF, but now we have more than 80 teams in average. And uh, in recent years, not only domestic teams, but also abroad teams uh, are increasing, like from USA, Japan, and Taiwan, and so on. And the winner of last year won first place at others domestic CTF, which is not a uh, women-only CTF. Actually, she attend, attended that CTF as one member team, and now she is a member of demo, demo team. This was a really impressive thing for all of us. And invitation to Russia pitch the CTF final and uh, inviting Japan and Taiwan team were a good opportunity for us to make our own sustainable and stable community. And um, especially for about Japan and Taiwan team, despite that we have different cultures and languages, but we have one thing in common, interest in hacking. So that was a um, turning point and made meaningful motivations for each other. So finally, future plans. Uh, Korea is the first batter which have made women on ECTF and, uh, and followed by Japan and Taiwan respectively. So we, we feel really thankful, them, thankful to them the way they have made our uh, sociable Asian women cybersecurity community. And nowadays I, I heard some uh, information that that other Asian countries are trying to cultivate women researchers and uh, hackers in, in their country. So hope our three countries presentation could be a starting point and be a great help to them. I think, I, I believe we, uh, we can make more, we can make our community more influential and furthermore, we can uh, plan ahead more significant things together. Mm, to make our concrete community, so we are planning uh, to hold following events in near future. The first one is train course, a training program for whole age women in Korea. And secondly, organizing Power of XX with various teams from all around the world. So we want to make our CTF diverse. And, uh, and holding in international competition with 
with invitation women hacker teams from all around the world. So I want to make this uh, as a festival, not a simple CTF. And lastly, competition cooperating with Balluminar um, is also another future plan. So this could be uh, really cool. So to move on to Japanese women's cybersecurity community, uh, I will pass mic to Asuka. Really thanks for a big opportunity to give an introduction of Korea's women's cybersecurity uh, community. And if you have any question or have an awesome idea to, related to our event or community, please contact us by Facebook, Twitter, email, and so on. So really appreciate it. Sorry. So hi again, everyone. So now let's move on to the next story about CTF for Girls. So CTF for Girls is the first female infosec community in Japan, which was established in 2014 with the support of SecCon Executive Committee. So as you may know if you're a CTF player, but SecCon is the largest CTF in Japan, uh, which the more than like 30 Japanese companies are, are sponsoring, such as like Fujitsu and NEC. And with those uh, support and sponsors, uh, five years ago, I established a CTO for girls with about 10 female engineers and students. So next, uh, I would like to move on to why I established for girls. So based on my personal experience and opinions of my female friends, I felt that a lot of women feel like this. Like, I really want to start learning uh, infosex stuff, but um, I don't know where to start and I don't know who to ask about it. And I know there's a lot of workshops, but to me, it is difficult to fit into those workshops because most of the participants are men. And because uh, most of the security engineers are men, uh, maybe InfoSec is not for a woman. And based on these backgrounds, um, I saw that one way to breaking down the, these barriers is to make a female InfoSec community and hold a female-only CTF workshop. So next, I would like to introduce the activities of CTO for Girls. So there are two main activities. The first is women-only CTF workshop, and second is women-only CTF. So in the next few slides, I would like to talk about the women-only CTF workshop. So the first um, women-only CTF workshops was held in May 2014. What is interesting here is that before we held the first workshop, we assumed that only a few women would participate in our workshop. Surprisingly, in the end, more than 70 uh, women participated in our workshop. And since then, uh, we hold two, a workshop two to three times per year. And up to now, uh, we have held a uh, total 13 workshops and more than 500 women have participated in our workshop. So, at a workshop, um, we first give 40 minute lecture related to the computer security, such as binary analysis, forensics, and crypto, and web and network security. And um, after that brief lecture, we provide CTF challenges, which are related to the lecture and hold a mini CTF. And uh, the point here is that um, when in the lecture, we teach from the basics of computer science. For example, when we teach about like binary analysis, we start from what is hexadecimal and what is Windows API and what are resistor and memory and um, assembly. And furthermore, uh, we teach how to use a debugger. And for the other field, such as like forensic, crypto, and web security network analysis, um, we also start from the basics. 
So next, I would like to move on to uh, what kind of people are participating in our workshop. So based on our survey, uh, one interesting thing we found is that most of the participants are in their 20s or 30s. And unfortunately, there are still only a few students. And we assume that this is because like, um, there are only a few, uh, still, uh, only a few schools uh, focusing, focus on teaching information security. And uh, in addition, uh, most of the participants start learning InfoSec stuff after they are employed as uh, engineers or other information uh, security related jobs. So uh, thus, uh, for them, PT for Girls workshop are, seems to be a good starting point. So next, I would like to talk about what we focus on in order to provide a good workshop. So to, uh, um, first of all, uh, to support beginners, we provide a virtual machine which all of the related tools are already installed. And moreover, we provide a manual to install that virtual machine. And also, um, during the workshop, our staff members answer the question from the participants as soon as possible. And uh, we also provide CTF challenges from basic to advanced level so that everyone can enjoy the workshop. And we also um, sometimes regulate the media in taking photos because some participants don't want their pictures posted on the internet. So these are the photos taken at a workshop. And you can see that the participants are listening to the um, lecture earnestly. So, so far I talk about the women-only CDF workshop. So next, I would like to talk about the women-only CDF uh, that we call Ghost in the Shell CDF. So here, I will start with what is Ghost in the Shell? So Ghost in the Shell is a famous Japanese science fiction comic that was originally written by Shiro Masamune and was made into a Hollywood movie in 2017. So from 2015 to 2017, we collaborated with this Ghost in the Shell and held women-only CTF. And the, uh, the, this CTF has been held three times. And um, the, in the form of the individual uh, Japanese CTF. And the third Ghost in the Shell CTF was held as an international competition in Tokyo. And the winner of the third CTF was a security researcher from PPP. So next thing uh, I want to talk about is the CTF visualization system in the Ghost and Shell CTF. So CTF visualization system is one interesting characteristic in the Ghost and Shell CTF. So we call this uh, CTF visualization system as Amateurs Zero. So Amateurs Zero stands for Advanced Multi-Actor Tactical Exercise Real-Time Analysis System Prototype Version Zero. And this CTF visualization system was developed by NICT, the National Institute of Information and Communication Technology in Japan. The image on the slides uh, shows the CTF visualization system, which are showing the CTF players and the challenges. The blue circle, each blue circle uh, represents uh, the CTF player, and each orange circle represents the um, CTF challenges. And also this CTF visualization system can uh, show the details of all CTF challenges. So next, I would like to talk about how we connected the women in the InfoSec field to build the community. 
So first thing we did was visualize the community to gain recognition from the woman and encourage women to uh, participate in our workshop. So, for example, uh, we created an official website and social media accounts and reported the activities regularly. And we also created a logo, sticker, and t-shirts. And we also invited media, like uh, newspapers, magazine, and web media, and took a lot of interviews. And we also collaborated with uh, famous events and contents, such as Code Blue and Goes in His Shell. So next thing we did to connect the women it was uh, actively facilitate networking. So for example, uh, during the break for the workshop, we provide a few snacks such as donuts, macarons, cupcakes, and puddings. And mainly, these cute snacks are used to open the conversation between the participants. Like, for example, like, oh, this is really, really cute, sweet, and uh, um, sweet, and uh, yes, I totally agree with that. This is really, this is really, really cute. And where are you from? So, like that kind of conversation uh, starts between the um, participants. And furthermore, to facilitate networking, we hold an after party. So usually, about 10 to 40 percent of the participants also participate the after party. So that's how we uh, facilitate networking. Next, I would like to talk about how we build a sustainable community. So first thing we did is was um, we actively recruit new members. In the early days of City of Girls, we asked existing local community members, including SecCom members, whether they know women who are interested in City of Girls activities. And if there was were such women, uh, we contact them directly. So that's the early stage. And now uh, we recruit new members from the workshop participants. And as a result, number of members is currently about 30. So next thing we did to build the um, sustainable community was um, we created an organization that does not rely on a single person. For example, we created a manual such as like how to create CDF challenges and how to hold workshops. And furthermore, we hand over power to the young uh, members. And as a leader, um, I'm confident that even I, the leader, can be replaced, replaced by another member. So lastly, I would like to acknowledge all the CT for Girls members and the FECOM members, and also our, our sponsors for their dedicated support. And for, for more information about CT for Girls, please access through the website and Twitter account and the Facebook page. And if you have any uh, questions, please feel free to email CT for Girls at marksecon.jp. So that's all for City for Girls. So next is uh, Hit Kong Girls from Taiwan. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is a Hit Kong Girls from Taiwan. I'm Hazel Oyen, the co founder and the coordinator of Hit Kong Girls. Hit Kong Girls is an infosec community for women. All of our members are female as a beginning. I want to talk about how we start our story. In 2014, there were a few girls hold a workshop for girls. After the workshop in December, we felt it's a pity to dissolve this team. So we start thinking what we want to be. Be conscious from this workshop. Our Biggest obstacle is we don't have enough ability to host the workshop by ourselves. The speaker of the workshop come from outside, not by, not, not by ourselves. After our discussion, we decided to establish a study group for girls and then ourselves become girls. 
Our first step is to improve our information security domain knowledge. On the other hand, we find out it enhances the internal cohesion in Hikang girls. More is important of all, we can help more, more girls to learn infosec community in the future. So we have two purposes. The first one is we believe everyone can learn infosec. Whether you are a child or a woman, why should we emphasize this? Because in Taiwan, there are very few girls who say that my interest is infosec or I want to do an infosec job in the future. Those ideas are now are not an option for them. We want to increase this possible. So if you want to do this, we must share knowledge and then then have enough learning resources. And the share a message, Hikan girls can do it, other girls can do it as well. In order to do those things, our second purpose is teen our girls who are interested in infosec learning and going together. So our goals are improve our members' ability and maintain Hikan girls' organization. So we divide into two groups, the administrative group and the study group. Study group is essential of Hikan girls. We divide Hikan girls' study group into several teams. Each team has their own research topic. Study group have a meet out once a month and each team take turns sharing their researchers. Also, study group will give technical support when we have the knowledge, knowledge sharing events. Then, we, need, we also need some member to manage our community and host events. The administrator group, like our baby sister, they will take they will taking care of everything. Then the study group focus on their focus on their domain knowledge. For instance, our administrative group will arrange a meet every three months. The meeting usually including check in the current situation of study group and planning the coming event. Second. They also had a lot of social media to share knowledge and the broadcast message. And the last but not the least, they will set out a leader election every year because we believe everyone can be a leader of Hikan girls and the community belongs to everyone. There are three types of events which we had hoped before. First, the event means the bigger one and open to public. For example, an activity in HITB in Amsterdam or the CTF in 2019. Second, the knowledge sharing means we want to share our knowledge by ourselves. It's always supported by study group. The sharing invitation is the most important event that we are really appreciate. Many people are willing to come and give and give us encouragement and share their ex experience to us. Every event has different meaning to us. So we will talk about our story by those events. In 2014, there is a two-day workshop for girls. At that time, we don't have enough ability to hold the workshop by ourselves. So we build a study group. After running one year of study group, we, we publish our, our research result in this event. Um, this event is not show everyone how good we are. Instead of sharing a message, Hikan girls can do it, and uh, we are working on it. After the event, we have a lot of new girls join us. This is a Hikan girls anniversary. It's like 
that PPP's member came to Taiwan last year. They also accept our invitation very generously and share with us how interesting InfoSec is by their own experience. In 2016, we invite three outstanding women, two in InfoSec com company CEO and one conference founder to show with us the female is possible to be outstanding in the security field. And this is a teenager summer camp to teach the basic concept of information security. According to our purpose, we believe everyone can learn InfoSec. So sharing knowledge is not only for adults, but also for teenagers. So we transfer our knowledge to an easily understand language. We also have to narrow down the learning age. Every year, we work harder and do better and hope that we can make the community a little different. So this year, we invite the BOB member and the Jamaica researchers come to share with us. They share how special the work of the InfoSec is. From this year, some of our members graduated and got a job in InfoSec field. So actually last year is Hikan Girls Nightmare. We have encountered disbanding, lack of ability, and the member rules. Seriously. Those days were really tough. But we still have some member, some members and well organized community to hold the most technical InfoSec conference in Taiwan. The Hackers in Taiwan conference have 25 speakers come from more than 10 different countries and over 1,000 attendees. This not only acquired innovative year, but also the first year the organizers are all female. Also, they are Hikan Girls member. And in this year, Hikan Girls have grown strong enough. We host our own CTF, which is our mini store. By this year, we finally have the ability to design our own task. And the community become more stable because there are more girls want to join us. And this is our first time to do activities abroad in order to match the topic of HITB in Amsterdam. We, we held the Hikan Girls Can Work In and the Smart Country Challenge at the Future Expo. On the far right is the card we asked the designer to do for this event. And this event, uh, this year, we try a lot of different things, including this talk. Yeah. One of them is a special project, go to conference. We also know people prefer to watch the video and re then read the article. So we decided to both a process ticket and introduce overseas conference in this way. Also, it takes more time to prepare the sharing staff, but we still make it happen. And uh, both as much as resource back to Taiwan. And this year, we also invite a researcher from a third intelligence a from, from a third intelligence company to try with us. Let us deeply feel the removal of stereotypes and try to be better. Till now, what I want to say is that we have experienced many step setbacks and try tries along the way, but we have never forgotten our own purpose. We believe everyone can learn InfoSec. So let a woman know that they can and keep them have enough learning resources. 
We work hard to keep her, uh, we work hard and uh, we work hard to keep and organize, organize our knowledge in order to that this knowledge can be safe and released. We will keep the slides and the records of past events which holds by us. So there, there are there are 30 books for videos and 22 slides for now and still increasing. Few years passed, Hikan girls no longer a group of girls. They have changed and grow up. All of our members are volunteers. They choose whether they want to help the community or lending the info sick or both. Yeah. So the event just introduced a thanks to those members for their help. And so far, we had many speeches and activities at the school or university or a conference. This, prov this provides the girls can do it as well. In addition, we hold our own CTF challenge by ourselves. For us, this is a successful model for running a female community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Hazel. And now let's um, move on to the takeaways. Okay. So to conclude the talk, we summarize today's takeaways in this slide. So first, we talk about the history and current status and activities of three Asian female emphasis communities in South Korea, Japan and Taiwan. And second, we show the details of how we build and maintain our communities and how we tackle the various challenges such as creating a sustainable community. And third, uh, lastly, uh, based on this talk, we believe that our uh, three communi communities reveal some of the factors that are important in starting and community, uh, continuing a female community. For example, each community started mainly by a few tech savvy women with this, some sort of support from existing local community like POC, DOC, SATCON, and HITCON. And lastly, all the community members are connected by their interest in technology, like CDF and like malware analysis and etc. Okay, so that's all for today. And thank you for listening. And if there are any questions, we are happy to be uh, happy to answer it. Thank you very much.